Welcome, everybody, to the Hollow Chronicles podcast. I'm Andy. And I'm Josh. What's going on? This is episode 35, Josh, and there is so much to talk about today. We have some exciting news. Um, we have just crested the 1,000 follower mark. Yay! And, yay! And, thank and you. And we want to we say thank you to all 1,010 10, 10. of our... Yes, 1010 10 in 2020 of our current followers at the time of this recording. Um, just a, a little bit of shout outs. Actually, Josh, we're going to do a lot of shout outs in today's podcast because um, in a different way than the awards show, right? we want to say thank you and we want to acknowledge as many of our followers as we can. Uh, I know I know they appreciate shout outs. You know, I appreciate getting shouted out on other things. And and so we're going to do our best to probably shout out about 10, maybe 12 different of our followers today throughout the podcast. But our 1,000th follower comes to us at the Twitter handle at Eric Friend 5. Now, I don't know if he followed us because he saw that we were on 999 and thought, you know what? That's a good reason gonna, to follow. Yeah, I would, I, I'd, I would do that. I've done that before. I would. You know? Uh, but whatever the case, Eric Friend 5 is now our friend, 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Eric Friend 5. That's uh, so cool. You know, here's, yeah. here's what I love about this, and, and I'll let you keep going, but let me... It is I think I said it on our last pod. It's been very organic, and by yes. that I I I feel like that's a a compliment. Now and and I have to compliment you. You're our our Twitter handler, so to speak. <laughs> um, Andy, see what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does many of the posts. He keeps it alive. Um, and and so by organic i mean just just people enjoying what we're putting out there and yeah 1000 one you know 2000 3000 1 million i mean it doesn't oh. matter we can we'll get there any way we get there we exactly woo dr evil we haven't uh we haven't paid anybody to 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 get us followers so i'm pretty proud of that and uh uh man sure am uh happy and and thankful for our for our followers so go ahead give some you more know- recognition well, I just before we move forward, I want to look backwards, if you will, just for a second. Sure, sure. If you listen to a couple of our earlier first podcasts, uh, when we're talking about, you know, boy, wouldn't that isn't that going to be cool when we get to a hundred? A hundred, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Maybe we should, maybe we should uh, do a giveaway for our hundredth <laughs> follower, and and we got a hundred followers, and it, I want to say like. We asked every follower from like 97 to 106. Yep. But nobody wanted to give us their address. No, don't blame them. Don't blame them. Yeah, rightly so. Uh, but I, I don't know. That's funny. And now we're tenfold. Yeah. We're at a thousand. Give us all your addresses. Give us, <laughs> give Josh all of your addresses. Email him uh, at, no. at Josh. All the chronicles. At Josh.com. <laughs> yeah, good uh, luck. <laughs> um, no, no, but that's, that's super cool. And, and you're right. I remember it. I think we were at 30, I want to say 33, but it's probably, I think it was 37. And we were like, man, when we get to a hundred, it's going to be great. And that was only, gosh, that was, that was not, not even a year ago. So it's pretty cool that, you know, uh, I don't know. Again, thank you to our listeners. Very cool. Yep. Thank you very much. I also want to shout out, um, a YouTube follower of ours who isn't, on twitter but he's a he's a faithful follower big fad ass and and we appreciate him um darren mcfadden is that what up, you said uh keep up the foes david and yeah david darren mcdavid david david McFadden. McFadden. yep yeah sorry you cut out there a little bit so i wanted to make sure we got out. it out there oh i did yeah david mcfadden yeah. awesome youtube uh, follower josh There's a lot in the news. Let's hit the news. Let's hit the news. We can do it. Star Wars news. Remember when that was your job before 
the pandemic happened. <laughs> Do you remember that <laughs> when you were a lot better at it than I was? <laughs> all right. Oh yeah. I had my little soundboard. Yeah. Up. Yeah. You were all um, hooked up, man. Well, today, uh, at the time of the recording, it's April 19th. It's a Sunday. And today was a big day for Funko releases, uh, it, as it pertains to target. Um, there was earlier this weekend, I think like Friday, uh, there was a there was a Mandalorian Funko Pop release of a of a different posing uh, Cara Dune. Okay. Uh, for at Fye for your entertainment exclusive, I should say Fye exclusive. But today released a few of the Futura pops, right. specifically the Jawa the R2-D2, and the Stormtrooper. Uh, the C-3PO had been released a couple weeks ago, and I'd like to shout out uh, Zoinks Scoob on Instagram. And his name's Austin. Uh, he managed to grab a couple extra and sent Ooh. them our way. Uh, that's where we got ours from. So thanks, Zoinks Scoob. Zoinks Scoobs. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Yes, thank you very much. But that should complete now the Futura line of Star Wars Funko Pops. Uh, overall, there was a, a little, there was a, there was a few Boba Fetts. There was those that we mentioned. There was a Darth Vader, and they're different. They're not. I've heard mixed reviews on them, uh, just because they have different paint and color schemes. Here's the deal. What do you think? What do you think yeah, about them? Let me give you a, the deal. Uh, my deal. So 3PO and even the Stormtrooper, I, I like them. I really like them. But I'll tell you what, the Jawa really made me happy. And so hey I'm guys. talking about initial reaction. Like if I grab 3PO and he's got, you know, the kind of the overspray uh, Stormtrooper, and you can see it up on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, Stormtrooper kind of has this circly swirly you know, thing. And then, and, and R2, I haven't held. I, I don't have an R2. I didn't get him, but um but the Jawa with that camo just <laughs> makes me really happy. I mean, obviously, desert camo would have been a better option. But, uh, you know, this is like the Jawas as they drop in to invade, you know, Endor type of situation here. And uh, <laughs> I'm okay with the Jawa army. Can you imagine if that was the DNA they used for the clones were, were Jawa DNA? That but, would um, be a hilarious. A hilarious. Be- Probably ineffective. Ineffective, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lots of disintegrations, so yeah. yes. So my initial reactions to the C-3PO, he looks like a cookie dough to me. Yeah, yeah. No, I like him. Here's the deal. I And, and this is funny because we're, we're going to get to this, but because they come in the in the hard plastic case, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm having trouble extracting them, where Pops I don't have any trouble with. Mm. And, and this is a dilemma. I think it's one we're going to cover. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll tease that. It's funny. I didn't even think of that until now. But yeah, we're teasing a, 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 a future bit A new here. bit. Yeah. yeah, we're going to try out a new bit here pretty soon. Um, To keep the food comparisons going, I think the Stormtrooper reminded me of like an Oreo blizzard. Yeah, or or the pretzels at, at Christmas time where you get the... I mean, they come in that, in that, that pack that grandma makes and she's got cookies and then she's got the drizzled pretzels, and that's what he looks like. He looks like a drizzled pretzel to me. So I totally agree with you. Okay. And then the R2 just looks uh, digitized zebra. Right. He's uh, designed to not be able to see with the naked eye. And, yeah, he blends right into the, to the savanna. <laughs> Sahara. I almost said Alpha. Sahara. Shut up. Maybe not the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> um, the there was also, uh, well, I know that for people that – are on entertainment earth uh in the last week or two there's been a lot of the releases to the 40th anniversary funko pops right of which there's about six or so maybe seven um and those those have been coming out trickling out uh which are very cool uh they've even shown up in target as yep. you told me uh today you picked that one i grabbed today. that luke and and yoda and the little yoda in the backpack i mean that is a great pop that is a great pop. I was tickled when I saw it because I I had not been on Entertainment Earth and Little Yoda peeking over Luke's shoulder, Seagull style, is uh, fantastic. 
Penny for your thoughts. <laughs> Penny for your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Uh, and then, and then the fortieth anniversary. I don't know if they're going to do any more for that specific line, but if they didn't, it accumulated today with um, another ten-inch Boba Fett in his uh, in his natural colors. He's not black or red. He's he's Boba Fett in the ten-inch form in his natural uh, state color color scheme. Yeah, I love it and. It's great. It's it's totally cool. He is very um, cool. And is that yours? The pick that you show is that yours, or is that one you grabbed? That's not no, yours. That's, yours that's is one I grabbed. That's coincidentally is Zoinks skew. Oh well, there we that's go. Zoink. His. He got. He happened to pull off. I think he went to a couple of targets today, but he got two of each. Oh wow! And he opened up a set and uh, has them on display. And the others he is keeping for another time. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> oh, man. We're laughing because we know something that you don't know yet. And yet. that is yet. Perfect. Which will probably get us kicked off YouTube, but we're okay with that right now. Um, yeah. yeah no, he's also, he's beautiful. Oh, I, let me comment on that. He's beautiful. Uh, I will take him out. No problem. I have the red Boba 10 inch that you and I, I think got together with the Mandalorian logo kind of plastered on the side of his face and i always make the comment uh whether it's funko or whether it's a con that there's always a one-up boba fett right and so i'm yeah, so happy you're talking with, about you're talking about cosplaying cosplay right? yeah. yeah so boba fett normally what the last con we went to the rose uh city comic con remember uh, when we used to have those yeah, I do. I do. I remember when there was a group of people in, in a giant room together and nobody was worried about dying. But uh, we went to that con. We didn't see a legitimate Boba Fett cosplay. It was all what I call one up Boba Fett's like it was like, OK, take the Boba Fett, you know, or the Mandalorian armor and and spray paint it. So I've already covered this, but I'm so happy to see this Funko pop. It only took well, I mean, in 10 inch, I guess. But here we go, a legit Boba Fett. I think he looks fantastic. There's no reason to change him. He's he's no, he's great. He's perfect. So yeah, yep, there he is. And uh, and and if there aren't any more, like I said, this would be the last of the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back uh, collection. Yeah, that Funko has put out this spring. Yep. Um, but but it's it's my favorite one. I like it better than the uh, Futura ones. Um, I agree. But yeah, yeah, there he is. Uh, other toys being released this week uh while i was shopping for some funkos this morning at 7 a.m at my local target um i also came across uh some new legos there's there were three new lego sets uh in a in a helmet line okay and they're about the size of a cantaloupe or a melon if you could imagine um and there was a boba fett helmet a uh, stormtrooper, white stormtrooper helmet, and then not pictured for those watching the the episode. There was a there was a Tie Fighter, a black Tie Fighter helmet. Right, and there I think personally I think they're really cool. Um, we did have posted, some mixed reviews on Twitter though. Yeah, yeah, I posted posted a picture of it. Hey, you know, said these are also out. I bought the Boba Fett one because I'm a bit of a, a fat head freak. A fat head, fat head, yeah, <laughs> Bubba freak. Bo I don't know. Um, yeah. Boba boy, Boba fret. I <laughs> Jeez. Uh, All right, move on. Anyway, um, there were there were some there was a few a uh, couple guys in particular that weren't wild about them, and that's okay. Uh, just because you know I happen to like something or Josh happens to like something doesn't mean everybody's gonna like it or that everybody needs to. In fact, don't like things that we like. That Please just don't. means more for us. <laughs> <laughs> or don't like them enough to put them in your collection, and we'll you'll enjoy them when you see them in ours. But yeah. I, I did I did it uh, partially agree with the comment that was put up. I forget by who, and you can look it up if you want to. But uh, this is a guy by the name James of Jamie. Ja Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah. So, oh, and you did get one. That's beautiful. He's putting it up yep. on the screen now. If you're watching on YouTube, it looks just like the picture we have up. Except he's holding it. Um, uh, I didn't. I didn't disagree in the fact that it was. You know, I. I didn't disagree in that he was saying like, oh, they're kind of limp. You know, kind of limping this one in, or you know, it wasn't. It was kind of weak. But 
upon inspection, now I didn't get one because I like the idea of, of Legos, but putting them together seems to be a chore for me. Um, <laughs> so again, this is one of those instances for a much used collector tip where I'm okay with you having that in your collection, Andy, so I can come over and see it. Okay. Is that cool? I it's might cool get that me. Stormtrooper, though, if you didn't. I, well, I was thinking because you tend to lean uh, Stormtrooper. I do. Uh, I, I thought that that might tickle your fancy a little bit. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no. They're they're cool, but, you know, and anything on a pedestal. Did it come with the pedestal, obviously? Yep. Yeah, yep. see, that's... Displayable is always better for me because inevitably you're you're trying to find display options for your toys. And when and the reason I say that is Tantive 4 or whatever, it came, you know, the the most recent one, not the uh, le- uh what do they call those? Uh the collector series ultimate collector ultimate series. Ultimate collector series, but it was a pretty good one, the two hundred dollar Lego. It didn't come mm-hmm. with a it didn't come with a, a a display stand. And I and it's got guns on the, you know, cannons on the bottom that that rest against the surface when you put it down and, and that kind of frustrate, I have to go now get one, you know, third party on eBay or wherever, um, which, or, or you could just build one. <laughs> what? No, I'm going to get one third party. <laughs> okay. That's why those guys are in business because I cannot <laughs> build one. Um, so anyway, I, I do like when a display stand comes with your toy. That's great. Cause that's what we're doing, right? We're displaying yeah. them. <laughs> we're not playing that's with kind, them. That's kind of what we do. Yeah, it is. It is. Unless you let your kids play with them. Yeah. Well, I don't. Um, there's also the newest uh, wave of Black Series that are starting to come out. I, I saw a couple at Walmart. Um, and uh, that would be the uh, Plo Koon. There's the a new Ki- Plo Koon? I got him yeah. from Pulse. I know that, but... Okay, you, you might have gotten yours a while ago then. No, I mean, he's the he's pre-ordered, sorry. Okay. Yeah, well, they're starting to trickle out a bit. So, uh, Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, uh, there's a Commander Bly, and there's a fourth one. I can't remember can't remember the fourth one off the top of my head. I should have wrote it down. Here's Bly if you want to see him on YouTube. He looks yes. good. Now, we had the debate because uh, I might be colorblind, but he looks a lot like Cody to me. But you're saying Cody's orange? Cody is is more orangey. Or is he more than... yellow and Bly is a little more mustard? I mean, how deep are we going in the uh, color spectrum for these clones? Well, Cody is white and orange. Okay. Bly. Let's put a pull up. Bly, <laughs> Bly is white and yellow. Or if you want to go mustardy, that's fine. It's going to be like the Yanny. Yanny. It's going to be the same thing, you know, when they do those. What color do you see when you're, because yeah. we all have. Is it purple and white or is it gold and blue? Exactly. Yeah. I hate those things. Me too, because I always am opposite of my wife. So apparently we see things in different spectrums. What, what, you, you and your wife are, have opposing views on things at times? Right, right. There's a dominant view. And, and so it's not yours. That is mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Right, honey? <laughs> right, honey? Is that right? right? Huh? Is that right, babe? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, that leads us right into, Does coincidentally, it? our newest Holocronicles bit. Josh, take it away. You know, I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, like I said, we'll probably get kicked off of YouTube for this, but we're okay with that because... I'm uh, Sorry. McFadden, <laughs> uh, you can catch us on uh, any pod, <laughs> any podcast network. But uh, this is a little bit uh, Andy and I have had fun with in the past, and this is actually like it could almost be parlayed into a, a collector tip slash quandary, right? And we've mm-hmm. talked about it in the past, hmm. but we like to call this bit with a heavy nod towards Saturday Night Live. We like to call this bit <laughs> open it. Or keep it in the box. box. And here's a little, (laughs) or leave it in the box, whatever it is. Here's a little, here's a little reminder. If you haven't seen this bit, you can look it up. All credit to Saturday Night Live. And here's a quick clip that just makes us chuckle. Kylo Ren, (laughs) I'm going to get you in my lightsaber. Or leave it in the box. Stormtroopers attack. Or leave the 
in the box and never touch them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great bit. That's just yeah. a small part because there was so much Star Wars music in the back. We were for sure going to get kicked off, but and we will, but that's all right. Um, so so uh, leave it in the box. So open it yeah. or leave or it in the box. Leave it in the box. And so I, go I'll, ahead. I'll kick this. You I'll kick, kick it this off. off. Yeah. And so I, like I said at uh, at Walmart, I did get myself. A uh, shout out to my wife, who actually Ooh. was the one who spotted it. Uh, I got a, com- a Black Series Commander Bly, and and I do have. And this has been talked about before. I've dipped my toe in Black Series a, a few different times, and I've never committed to them because there's so many, and I would want them all. And this is something where I tell Josh, I will enjoy Black Series when I go to your house, mm. but not when I have them at my, not at my house. But that said, I do have about 10 Black Series figures. Maybe it's a couple more, but um, I've kept a few just because they're kind of themed on a shelf and they're uh, they're my troopers. So And you found some troopers. very awesome uh, display stands for a few of them, which we yes. talked about in the past. Yes. Um, and so, so I, I feel like I've got a nice little trooper display going on. And so... Clone Commander Bly fits right in with that shelf. Okay. And so I grabbed him. Now, on that shelf, I have some in the box and some out of the box. And so what I want to ask you, Josh, is I know what the answer to this question is, but do you think I should open it or keep Keep it in the box? box. Um, (laughs) You know, here's the reason why I think you should open it. Okay. Okay. Let's hear. Is because you already have a few clone troopers, you know, out of the box, correct? Mm-hmm. I do. And some of which are displayed. I think one it looks like he's in the in the air, kind of shooting or something like that. I, I think you posted some that, pictures of him, right? That would be Rex. Yes. Oh, that's Rex. Yeah. So Rex is looking awesome. Double pistol action, shooting down. You know, that's what he does, right? But so for me, and because of your Black Series. Uh, limitations, meaning you've avoided them because, uh, or, or actually by avoid, I mean you you got rid of a full collection, especially of the orange and blue line, to just kind of say, I, I can't do Black Series. We've talked about this a hundred times, so I'm not going to go too far. But uh, you, I think you're the prime candidate to take it out of the box because it's going to go pretty nicely next to your your unboxed figures already. But again... A quandary for a collector. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, that shelf uh, space is limited on it. So I, I feel like if I'm going to get Bly on the shelf, I'll need to take him out of the box. Mm. Um, but my hesitation is that knowing my penchant for getting rid of Black Series that I get from time to time, I'm tempted to leave him in the box just so... Keep it when in the it, box keep it sorry <laughs> keep it in the box just so that if is it and when <laughs> if and when i do decide to get rid of this then the new owner can decide for Me. himself or herself <laughs> <laughs> if they want to take it out or keep it in the box keep it in so the, so so maybe yeah so maybe i'm giving you bad advice uh because that could be mine in the future so yeah keep it in the box so for right now, I'm going to keep it in the box. Okay, all right. But but you are absolutely right. Since I do have some open already, this could, I could very easily change my mind. But for right now, today, he's staying in the box. Okay, so that's a collector decision right there. Now, I don't think many collectors out there, as a matter of fact, when we purchased some some items from a particular collector, the thought of any of his items coming out of the box later on while in our possession made him physically ill. I saw him turn green. So so there's some collectors that are very leave it in the box, right? Keep it in the box. Very much. Very much. So, so we get that. And to be honest, there are quite a few uh, items in our collections that we for sure are, are keeping in the box. However, especially when you go to the vintage side, you get real comfortable with little display, like displays of the the naked figures, right? And they're yeah. so enjoyable. I've 
handled and maneuvered and repositioned, and I know you have probably tenfold, all your little guys, and there's something that just reminds you about being a kid. So without further ado, I have an item that needs to be out of the box, and I have made the decision. So we're not even going to try and guess here. This is coming out. It's coming out. Okay. It's coming well, out. You I'm, say you did your setup and mine is all about, I'm sorry. This is like, like, cause if I don't jump off the cliff, <laughs> then I might, I might decide to change my mind. So I just jumped. It's yeah. coming out of the box. And okay. actually, um, on a pod, we were just uh, guests on postcards from galaxy's edge, right? Uh, yes. With Shannon, Moran. with Shannon Moran. We talked about this figure and she's actually what kind of br- brought it to the forefront of my mind and I've had him for a little while. He came with as part of a, a a different collection, kind of a throw-in. I mean, I paid for him, but not a lot. Kind of a throw-in, and he's so cool. And then, given kind of the 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 anniversary we got going on right now, and 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 all that, I've got the success of the Mandalorian. Yeah, and here's a funny story. In a second, I've got. And sorry for those of you listening, I'm reaching back. I'll put it on the camera. I've got a Force Unleashed Boba Fett. Looks like he's riding a bull as he's getting as he's getting out, I believe. He's escaping from the Sarlacc pit. I mean, yeah, he's riding so, the bull. Look at that. Woo-hoo! Yeah. That is that is a very cool figure and little display. Yeah. Now, as Josh, as you uh open it up there, um, when we were on Shannon's podcast, shout out to Shenanigans. Uh, Shannon ran on uh, postcards from Galaxy's Edge. If you haven't listened to the pod that we're on with her, it's it's really good. She runs a very uh, a very well produced podcast. Um, and when we were talking, we were talking about uh, Forced and Leashed figures. Actually, she got in a conversation about Forced and Leashed figures when she decided to. Uh, display. We encouraged her to do the hashtag show me your collection. And she displayed um, yesterday, in fact, her Star Wars collection. And through that, the Force Unleashed figures got mentioned. And then another person posted a few pictures of some of the Force Unleashed figures that they had. And it just, I had forgotten. I mean, I, I knew in my mind what the Boba Fett one looked like, uh, but I had never had it. Uh, but that was a pretty cool line of figures. Very cool. Um, that that if you, that if you have some, post some pictures of them because I don't even think I've seen all of them. I've just seen a handful, and and they're pretty cool. I I agree. So, and this is what's cool. It's because they're all kind of uh, gosh, what's the word? It's it's, it's very stylized, like, stylized, stylized, and it's yeah. and it's almost like what if, right? Obviously, with Boba escaping from the Sarlacc pit is definitely a what if there's plenty of theory around that and hope you know even now it's still speculated that did we hear his clinking spurs Spurs. in the Mandalorian or not but there's a good line on the back and it says he is and this is kind of the description that's written on the back of this really cool kind of cylindrical how do you say that cylinder like cylindrical cylindrical uh uh container it says he is armed not only with powerful weapons but with the superb survival and martial arts i love that he's a ninja skill taught to him by his father Django. it doesn't say Django, but i put it in there if it could be possible for anyone to emerge alive from the carnivorous maw of the sarlacc that person would be boba fett so i kind of like that too right shaft um so uh that was Flash Gordon, but whatever. Um, so here you go. I'm cracking the top. Now, I will say I did prep. I was that ready. I cut the tape so that to save time. You and do. Now I am untwisting the little twisty tie, which we all love so much. Those twisty ties that I, keep I you. I hope there's like eight of them in no, there. No, no, no. Oh, crap. I didn't cut all the tape. Damn. There's tape inside. <laughs> they taped it inside. I mean, it, you got you got to also be very... Uh, you know, leave it in the box is also kind of an homage to the the crafty packing of uh, whoever designed the packing for this, right? So kudos to them, wherever they may be. 
probably in quarantine. Oh man, this is a lot of tape. Just a sec. You need a knife. I'm almost there. Oh, I kind of, I'm kind of like over pulling there. You should never do that, but for time's sake. And then here we go. Man, see, so this mm. is what I call a centerpiece type of. I mean, this has to be on display. Yeah, that's awesome. That has to be on display. I love the kind of the ole, like he's riding a bull. Yeah, like catch me if you can. Now check this out. His jetpacks are just spewing flame, and it's molten down into the sarlacc's mouth. I mean, Boba's winning this this battle right now. Yeah, the sarlacc has a burnt tongue. It does, and we all know how bad those hurt. Yeah, so uh, I love it. There's even an unnecessary uh, little little twisty tie here to keep Boba's leg suspended. I mean, it, it's a very cool piece, and so I'm proud to take him out of the box. I will keep the box, if that makes you feel better. Not in the box, but I'm going to keep the box. And uh, <laughs> for no particular reason than to frustrate my wife with our limited storage space. So there you go. There he hey. is. So again... I, I kind of want to do this bit because I think a lot of us go through that and you just brought up Shannon kind of lamenting a little bit like, should I take it out? Should I leave it in the box or not? It's definitely your preference. I don't know if we've ever said this, but never. Well, not never. I shouldn't say, never say never, right? Never but always. Never always. But but be careful valuing your happiness with a dollar amount. So the happiness that I just got from pulling that guy out of the box, he's sitting back here now, he's going to, mm -hmm. is, is far outweighs maybe the 40 to $70 he's worth on eBay. Right? Yeah. And I, Josh, that's not just a good collector tip. That's a good life tip. Yeah. Like, don't try and put a dollar amount on your happiness. Don't. Don't Cause... go for three layovers to save $100 on a flight. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that yeah, one before. Amen. That was amen fun. Amen that. Woo. So yep. anyway, so there you go. There's our new bit, our new segment. Do you yeah. open it or do you leave it in the box? In the box. There you go. Nice. Well, you we'll wanna... get there, Andy. It's fine. We're, we're, also, I, I know. we're also not in the same you, room. Will you hit the clip again? Because I love hearing it. All right. Let's do it one more time. And, and okay. now we'll, def we'll define... Whether it's keep it in the box or leave it in the box, which one do you think it is? I think it's leave. You think it's leave it in the box? Yeah. All right, here we go. Kylo Ren. I'm going to get you in my lightsaber. Or leave it in the box. <laughs> leave it. Stormtroopers attack. Or leave them in the box and never touch them. <laughs> leave them in the box and never touch them. I got three. <laughs> <laughs> one to open, one to keep, and one just in case. <laughs> in case of what? <laughs> you never know, Josh. You never know. You never know. Just in case. So All right. Well, since since we already kind of teased it, Josh, uh, let's do our uh, hashtag show me your collection for last weekend and as well as this weekend's. I know we already kind of shouted out Shannon's already, but we'll we'll do hers second since chronologically she was second since we have last potted. Here we go. Show me your collection. This one's cool. Last weekend, a fellow by the name of Roel, or Roel, um, at the handle at Jedi Relics, sent us a picture of his collection, Josh. And usually we ask for four to eight photographs of your collection. He sent us one. <laughs> and that was for a very simple reason, and that is that he is moving, and all of his Star Wars collection was in bins, whether they were clear tubs or kind of the heavier duty, you know, black tubs. The barge is still in the <sighs> still in the box, still in the leave uh, it in the box. <laughs> um, but yeah, he just took a still sh a, a one still shot of. All of his collection boxed up, ready for moving. And that actually generated some pretty fun conversation about, oh boy, I wonder what's in that one. You know, because you can just barely see yeah. if you zoom in. Yeah, we're zooming maybe, a little bit. Like, you can just maybe make out, oh, that's a, that's a Revenge of the Sith yeah. figure. Yeah, those or bubble packs a, there. Yep. Yeah, or that's an Attack of the Clones packaging. Or, Obviously you know, a katana you, up front on top. We got... 
some vintage AT AT. Oh, there's the the new skiff right there. I mean, and then what in the heck is in those? And I have plenty of those in my storage. The black and yellows from from Home Depot slash Lowe's, wherever you go. <laughs> Walmart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so a fun. It, that, that right there makes me like kind of like salivate a little bit because it's like, oh, what's in there? Oh. Yeah. And so and for those of us that are like addicted to hunting and digging through things uh just to see what if there's even just a little part of a vehicle in the corner of a tub that maybe fell off or something like i want to get my hands on that and see what's in there right now eventually in the text thread or in the uh, twitter thread that the conversation kind of evolved into he did open up a few of them and take some pictures of what was in some of the tubs. I don't think he did it for all of them, but um, at least the clear tubs he did it. It Well, the first thing that struck me, Josh, is that he cares about his stuff. Yeah. It looks right? real nice. That is there's that, that organization two, alone right there three, four, is five, fantastic. There's 23 tubs. For those that can't see the picture, there's 23 tubs, and they're not small tubs. They're like two hand, two handled tubs. There's 23 of them, plus a box for the sail barge, and a few things that are still in their original packaging. So that tells me that he he cares about his collection. It's not willy nilly. It's not haphazard. You know that when he gets to his new destination. Those things are going to be set up for display. They're not staying in those tubs, and and they're not going to be just casually put on shelves. That's somebody who thinks about what they have and how they're going to display it. Don't you agree? I do agree, and uh, it's obvious when you look at this, he is definitely a leave-it-in-the-box guy, So, which, which I'm cool with because I'm just really fascinated by the fact that he's only got three items – four items if you include the uh the barge that cannot be binned that's some tetris like uh packing <laughs> and i appreciate the hell out of that because you know there's nothing worse than having a tub and and some very you know awkward packaging or boxes to put in there and you've got dead space this guy uses every cubic inch and mm -hmm. uh to me that's a sign of a meticulous collector which uh, means he probably cares a lot about what he's got in those bins and uh, when he gets to his destination, we'll display them properly. And I'm excited for that. So we might have a repeat on, on uh, yeah. what was his yeah, handle again? As, um, at Jedi Relics. Jedi Relics, at Jedi Relics. So yeah, yeah, good on him. Whenever he, yeah, I told him whenever he gets his setup set up to uh, shoot us a few more pictures. And, and one thing that was cool too, he opened up one of the tubs and says, this is just my uh, for sale or for trade bin. So if anybody sees something in there they like, let me know. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, uh, that right there is something I'm interested in. If, uh, you know, of course, he hooked, he hooked yeah. me and reeled me in yeah. as soon as he opened, you know, as soon as he took a picture and said, like, these are just like for whatevs. And, uh, <laughs> Suck and up. uh, yeah, so I, uh, I did get something from him and, uh, he was kind enough just to mail it to me. So I appreciate him. Shout out to Roel at Jedi relics, relics with an S, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jedi okay. Relics. Now we have another right, collection so, too, right? Yep. Yeah, that was last weekend, this weekend, as in yesterday, since our podcast with Shannon on greetings or uh, postcards from Galaxy's Edge came out this week, uh, we also featured her collection yesterday to kind of tie into it because it seemed like it was um, good synergy, Josh. There you go. Good synergy. Way to support the pod that you're a guest on. Yeah. Um, Shannon's collection's cool because, hey... We yeah. can see it. And it's not like any that we've really had before. She's got a different eye. And she even admitted that some of it was due to space. Like she has more pictures and photographs and posters because of limited space, which is always a collector's 
bugaboo. You know, I I right. got more stuff than I have space for. That is not ergo uncommon. bins. <laughs> yeah, uh, storage spaces and attics and crawl spaces and what have you. But um, but you know, she all of her pictures and posters and uh, they're like collage style. And so there's a little bit here and there. And uh, it, what, what, uh, here's what, what stood out like to me. This? So right now, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see if, uh, you can see this. And if not, you know, go find us at Holochronicles on YouTube to watch, or just go check out our Twitter at Holochronicles. And you can uh, definitely see this under hashtag show me your collection. But here's the deal. And this is what we talk about all the time is I got to spend five to 10 minutes on each one of the pictures of Shannon's collection because it's very interesting. And, and every time you, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, especially pictures of pictures, um, there's some interesting things because when you talk about a star Wars fan, and if you talk about me with my mind, what Shannon does here with this collage, which is gorgeous, uh, I wouldn't be capable of because she melds some different things. Now, what we learned about Shannon is she's got her uh, her fingers in, in a lot of different projects. She's a she's a artist, so to speak, and uh, no, well, not so to speak, definitely an artist. And she works in a lot of places. So we have Dark Crystal is a poster that's on the wall here, right? And we're looking at a yep. uh, a, a wall of posters, really, and 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 some other paraphernalia. And I'll let you bring up the one you really like. Then you have some Avengers, and then you have Captain Marvel, and so. We've always said this, a collection, whether it's pictures, posters, whatever, toys, um, is a, a great expression of the person who's who's displaying them, right? And so yes. reading into this, I see a lot of of Shannon, you know, just from knowing her, like, uh, I can do this with Ray holding the saber. There's even a kind of a stylized comic book-like um, shot of, and I don't know the name of the character, but it, it's Clever Girl, and that's obviously from Jurassic Park when... The Velociraptor gets the drop on the. Uh, do you know his name? What was his name? He's the, a zookeeper. Uh, the out, yeah, the Outback Hunter. Yeah, Outback Hunter. The guy that couldn't get taken down by a dinosaur got taken down by a clever girl. Um, yeah. Obviously, some 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 uh, con, uh, Comic Con. Uh, uh, you know what are they called? Lanyards, lanyards, celebration lanyards. Yeah. There's even a thermal detonator, Coca Cola uh, yeah. bottle, which we know where that comes from. Galaxy's Edge, which makes sense since that's where her postcards come from. Um, so yeah, take it away, take it away there, Andy. I know what well, you're looking at, and I saw that too, and was just like, "Holy cow, I want that now." Yeah, that's it's uh, it's it's a little. I don't know how many are there. About eight. Yeah, they look like uh, little travel tags that you would get on a suitcase, but they're from uh, Star Wars planets like Tatooine, T.A.T. Uh, Hoth, yeah, Hoth. And and they've got just like the the travel the airport stamp on the, them. The airport tag is what it like PDX for our Portland airport, right? So yeah, exactly. T A T and, and so, A L D. <laughs> there's a there's there's a bunch of them all in a row. I and I and I can't tell if it's like shadow boxed and they're actually individual tags in there, or if it's just a poster. Either way, it something looks great. like that. Either way, right. Either way, I'll have to ask her. I want to know what tag's hidden behind her little, uh, uh, another little poster there. But yeah, so let's look at the other part of her collection. And that is just fantastic. If you're watching on YouTube or like I said, follow us on Twitter, go and spend a few minutes because as a collector, this is what we get to do and really enjoy it. Like now I just want to, like like you said, Andy, I want to stand in front of that, uh, uh, you know, the bag tag collage and and just read because we can't see it all in the picture just read everything I, I love it so here's her here's the other part which i am fascinated by as well and part of our story and uh part of what we talked about with her on on her pod which is yeah, right there right in, the, in the center there yeah this the centerpiece just like your centerpiece in your office Josh, yeah yeah is a is an autographed picture of carrie fisher and in the podcast with shannon she talks about when she got that and there's a, a very cool story behind it. And I'll just tease it. So you have to go listen to her podcast to listen to it. But um, her and her significant other went and and together they got the uh, the autograph. And it's a very cool story. I won't say any more. Yep. Um, but uh, you can tell it holds a place of prominence on that wall. It's 
right in the center. Your eyes go right to it. And then, you know, the stuff around it's pretty cool too. I love the Rogue One poster. Yep. Um, and, well, and uh, again, another expression of the person. So we got some panda bears in there. You're going to learn something. You got some, some little foxes. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's always fascinating. I have no idea what is in that jar. I hope it's not like a, a hand or something, but if it is cool, good on you. <laughs> it's Luke's hand. Um, it's Luke's hand. <laughs> yeah, it's Luke's hand. We have a native American riding a horse. I mean, and then you're surrounded by star Wars. It's fascinating to me again. I'll just yeah. say it as a collector. I'm always fascinated by what, what other collectors do and, and who, in my opinion, and obviously with Shannon are, are pure artists when it comes to how they express themselves and I'm just always fascinated because I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? You know, and, and, and I don't even care if there's an answer because I get to make up my own conclusions, but um, very yeah. cool. Well, and, and what it does for people like us, Josh, is that uh, we see other people's collections are like, oh, hey, that's cool. And then we'll research, we'll do a little research on the things that we find cool. And, and maybe we'll end up getting something like that for ours. And, exactly. And their collection in turn kind of enriches our collection. And, and so it's just kind of, I'd have never, I'd have never known about the bag tag collage. Nope. If it, if it weren't for Shannon. And, and that's what, that's one of the reasons why I love doing this, the show me your collection thing uh, every week, because, you know, we learn something all the time in this last picture here. Uh, uh, Shannon and her better half, they each made a droid at Galaxy's Edge. And those are very cool. Um, is that a platypus in the middle? <laughs> with the, yeah, with it's a, a cowboy platypus hat. with a cowboy hat. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You've got a, an R2 <laughs> unit and a BB unit, both crafted um, by the maker themselves, which is Shannon and her better half. And then in the middle, we've got a platypus, I think. Or, or uh, is, that, is that correct? I, I mean, I can't. I can't really tell. You know, we're, we're going to leave it to Shannon to let us know <laughs> if that's a platypus or if it's a, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Or a teddy bear. Teddy bear of some sort. But yes. Could be a monkey. In a I cowboy don't know. Hat. No, I'm going platypus. I'm pretty confident in that. Whoops. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. That's, well, uh, thank you to uh, Roll and to Shannon for sharing your, or their, excuse me, their collections with us and remember if you have a star wars collection of any size whether it's just a few things on a shelf or it fills up an entire warehouse to the other extreme <laughs> um, we would love to see it if you wouldn't mind shooting us four to eight pictures of your setup or one uh, of a bunch have, of bins we'll take it or one, <laughs> yeah uh yeah dm us on twitter and we would love to feature yours sometime on one of these weekends thank you very um, much we using love the them. hashtag show me your collection good stuff all right moving on let's go man we're we're trucking uh, along here yeah and we're shouting out people uh collector tip collector tip sure let's do a collector tip collector tip hello what have we here collector tip this collector tip comes from a 2019 Holo Award nominee <laughs> at Vader Rapina. Um, he had a he had a great little suggestion, and it was like, duh, yeah, that's that's a great idea. Um, he he suggested in 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 some pictures that he had sent me because he had he had gotten some new stuff that he wanted to show for show me your collection. Um, but one of the pictures he sent was a cutout. He cut out the center square of like a t-shirt and he stuck it to the wall. So instead of keeping the t-shirt that either, uh, shrunk because t-shirts do that. Oh, they do over, all right, the guys? time. It's crazy. They, they either shrink. I think it's or moths and talk about moths. <laughs> 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 or sometimes we just wear them and love them so much that they kind of start to fall apart and they get holes in them. And then our wives tell us that we can't wear them anymore. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, if that may be more the case for my underwear, but yes, I agree. <laughs> well, as long as you got, you know, yellow in the front, brown in the back. You're good. <laughs> God. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he just cut out the, the square, you know, the featured part of the t-shirt 
and and stuck it to his wall because he didn't want to get rid of it. And I was like, that's a great idea. If I you think got it's a cool T-shirt that you don't want to get rid of. Yeah, that'll preserve it. Keep it becomes part of your collection. Then. Well, I like how you said kind of no duh. Actually, I'm like fascinated by that because especially the T-shirts that you kind of wear out. I think a T-shirt, whether it's cut out or even just framed in its entirety with some holes and some wear, I, I think that's just what a great collector tip, in my opinion, because you you brought that up and, and we saw it on Twitter and I was like, geez, now I have never grown out of a T-shirt, so I'll have to go through my, I mean, they've never shrunk. Uh, I'm just kidding. I could probably frame my house right now. Um, so anyway. <laughs> 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 no but that uh, little wear you know what i'm saying like even yeah, yeah, yeah. right now the they try and kind of starts to fray but and now there's a, a hole in the seam yeah yeah yeah, or, yeah 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 or in a yeah. just a bad spot you know belly button hole but nobody likes those <laughs> nobody <laughs> likes a belly button hole in your t-shirt no that's, yeah we know what you're doing you're tugging yeah you're tugging that thing up tugging. um so uh so yeah, that's a I love that tip. What a great tip. Yeah. And I think that's kind of uh what we what we've talked about before, just kind of the artistry of a collector um to well, to, and, to preserve what the, they love. That's the kind of contribution you expect from a holo nominee. You You're know? damn right. You're damn maybe, right. Maybe more stuff like that. That'll push him over the edge to uh follower of 2020 you yeah. never know yeah let's go he, we don't want to make him the meryl streep of the hollows all right <laughs> no <laughs> he needs no. to win one of these right yeah, we'll get, yeah. <laughs> just just keep sending us stuff like that good job vader um, rapina um all right josh you have an awesome easter egg i do i do let me see if i can get this up on the screen for you so oh hold on we have to hit the drop easter eggs there it is. We got some Easter eggs for you. So uh, as you know, and I admitted this on our last pod and got ridiculed for it, and I'm okay with that, but I am rapidly trying to keep catch up on the Clone Wars series. I omitted it from my Star Wars watching experience uh, for various reasons. One being I, it wasn't really on my radar. Two being it was hard to get to and I didn't want to pay 30 bucks for the season or whatever, you know, excuse after excuse. Now, of course... With Disney Plus, there are no more excuses, right? So I started watching, and I've been watching pretty regularly uh, as I can. And and really, you know, they're only 20 minutes a piece. But some of them are better than others, and some are just damn good. So I'm pretty impressed, and I think you're the one that told me, like, hey, just wait. After, I think you said season two, it really starts to ramp up. And I'm in uh, about four episodes into season three. I think my wife asked me today, she's like, how many seasons? <laughs> I was like, there's seven. But uh, anyway, because I had it on the TV while I was making myself lunch today. She's like, yeah. she came well, in smiling. Only 12 in season seven. Yeah, thank God. Episodes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. she came in smiling. And I go, what? And she's just like, I just think it's cute that you're watching cartoons and making <laughs> yourself lunch. I'm like, you're damn right. It's cute. It's, it's adorable. So anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm watching. And uh, what, what episode did we say? It was season two. Episode, episode 17. Yeah. Episode 17 at the 2151 mark. If you want to go see it yourself, I spotted something very interesting, which of course, anyone who hasn't watched the Clone Wars uh, recently, especially season two, uh, would not have picked up on because it has to do with a recently released show. And that is The Mandalorian. And uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. But in that episode, season two, episode 17 at the 2151 mark, there is a ship. Now, I think in this episode, uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan are uh, in cahoots with some bounty hunters to defend uh, a, a kind of a very docile species from the separatists. And they succeed, but in the process, they get their ship blown up, so they need a ride in the bounty hunter ship and look at that ship. If you're looking at the screen, it looks very familiar. And to me, uh, first thing I thought is that's the razor crest from the Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and wouldn't me, you agree? It, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you, don't agree? you agree? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe that's my end of voiceovers. Maybe I'll I do think you can do. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Hey, it's yours. Uh, Tell Pete, uh, start writing. Um, but, uh, hold on. So no, I'm going to try and bring up both screens here to kind of compare 
Now, obviously, go ahead uh, before I talk. Go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is that um, to me, it doesn't look razor. It doesn't look exactly like Razor's Crest, but it does look Razor Crest inspired. I mean, or vice I versa. That, I said that backwards. Yeah. yeah. I think this maybe inspired what then became what we now know as the Razor's Crest. Um, I, there's, there's definitely. I mean, it's Filoni. It's Filoni. He's, he's yeah. Connect, he's connected to both of them, and 100, percent they are, they are you know, different generations of the same kind of craft. I think he liked that ship. That ship never took off it, it, as far as I know, unless it happens in another uh, uh, st- uh, season. Uh, that 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 is the only shot. So the shot we have on the screen right now, again, season two, episode 17, the 2151 mark. You can go look at it right now. If you don't immediately think Razor Crest, you haven't watched The Mandalorian, you're crazy. No, I'm just kidding. It's just so close that... that that you just have to make that comparison. Obviously, the Razor's Crest, I'm forgetting the S, I apologize, is more stylized. It's got some cannons in a different position. Obviously, the cockpit looks a little different. But yeah, I mean, we're talking about animation for a quick cutscene to a ship to the the main ship of a of a high profile series. So yeah, live uh, action series. Yeah. So I oh actually look. Look, 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 down on the uh, on the on the Clone Wars side, the little cannons are underneath. I never even saw that. Much mm. like the little cannons, are those cannons on the Razor Crest? Here, I'll point with the mouse. But yeah. So I'm just saying, to me, especially since it was bounty hunter related, yeah. Kind of a cool Easter egg that could have, like you said, just been the evolution of the Razor's Crest as 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 a as a style when it came to creating the Mandalorian. So I yeah, was happy with just, that. I was damn happy with that. I've never seen yeah. anything like that. No one's brought it up, and I brought it up tonight on the Hall Chronicles. You, you found it. I found You're it. Breaking breaking news from season two. Of Woo! Clone Wars. <laughs> 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 but I I agree with you, Josh. There, there's definitely enough there to say that this is not a coincidence. Okay. All right. If Andy says that, then you all should agree because he's Andy. All right. Okay. Well, thank um, you. Time for a couple more shout outs, Josh. Okay. Uh, about a week ago, I had the opportunity to jump on a live chat with the Pala Boys. Hmm. That, that is a play on the Pala Toys. Gotcha. Um, and the Pala Boys consist of, well, there's, there's two from what I gather, two most of the time, sometimes three, um, but it's, it's headed up by Darth Mark. <laughs> and uh, his Twitter handle is at Star Wars Toy Pod. And uh, he's a fellow that lives in the UK. And uh, he, he's very knowledgeable about um, vintage Star Wars toys. And he does a little YouTube channel that's pretty uh, informational. And he just recently bought a Palatoy Death Star play set that he's going to try and kind of renovate and put back together in good working order. And it's very cool. Um, that is cool. And uh, his buddy uh, named Matt, and he's he's known as the Universal Collector on YouTube. And uh, um, he's also in the UK. And they just, they, they talk, they do a live chat. Uh, I think they're trying to do it every day during the, uh, during the quarantine because they're a lot more locked down in the UK than yep. they are here. Um but uh, that those two guys, I sat and chatted with them for about an hour. We talked about, you know, things that I collect. They were asking me questions. I was asking them questions. There's just a couple of really good guys uh, that have quite a bit of knowledge about the old vintage Star Wars stuff um, and and other toys, too. You can I have a feeling you can talk just about any kind of toys from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're going to they're going to be knowledgeable. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I've gotten to know them recently. There's a third guy too, who I've seen on there and who I've interacted with on Twitter a few times. His name's John at awesome geek show, but his tag is the super awesome geek show. And he's very toy knowledgeable as well. Um, all, all three of those guys are, are good dudes who love toys. Just like we do. We have a lot in common with them. John's in Florida. The other two guys are in great Britain. 
Um, and if you aren't following them and are, and are fans of toys or want to check out one of their YouTube videos, they all three have YouTube channels um, and are very, uh, very informational. We're a thousand and ten strong. You go follow them right now. Yeah, yeah. Now we feel. Take I feel that very. To the bank. It's like yeah. When we say Darn something, rights. you can take it to the bank. Darn right. So we're over a thousand now. But anyway, I want to shout out those three guys, Mark and Matt and John. Uh, thanks for having me on for that hour, and I look forward to being on again with them sometime. Awesome, Josh. You need you need to get on with these guys sure. once, once sure. or twice, and uh, and chat toys with them. If they're um, looking to dumb it down, send me a <laughs> DM. <laughs> uh, this um, I also want to shout out all of our Canadian followers. A I had I had no idea until this weekend just how many canadian followers we have i still have no idea this is new new news to me i'm excited um, go ahead well here's how it came about um lately for my own collection i've i've kind of been getting into getting the boxes for right like the old vehicles and yep. stuff um i i've been kind of just just on occasion looking up star wars vintage star wars empty box on eBay and just seeing what's reasonably priced and, you know, and I've, I've gotten a couple, um, of course, getting an ad at box, uh, usually means there's an ad at with it. And that means the price goes way up, but there was an ad at box that just had the front big square piece and the back big square piece, but not the little thin pieces that connect it. Um, and that was, uh, I got that on eBay for like 24 bucks. I thought that was uh, yeah. pretty reasonable. And, a piece of and they're, art. They're, yeah, they're the display sides anyways. Mm-hmm. They're not the side pieces. Mm-hmm. Well, the the front of it is a full color picture. It says Empire Strikes Back, ATAT, you know, and it's and it's cool. Um, but the back side, it's a Canadian box and the back is in French. And so uh, it, I'm looking at it right now. It says Le Empire Contraire attack. Oh, yes. I bet that was perfect French. Good job. Yeah, probably. Le Guerre we yes, just lost us uh, uh, half of our Canadian followers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I made the comment. Uh, I think it was to uh, Roe that for a guy with a French last name, you'd think I'd be able to say it a little better. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and so I put on Twitter. It's like this is a recent purchase of mine. I only have the space to really sh- display one side, I, right. you know, because it takes up a bit of space. Yeah, it was a and huge so, box. So which which side? Which side do I do? The the color side or the uh, the? It's kind of a français. Yeah, the French side, but it's not full color. Which and, would be uh, French Canadian, I guess. But yeah, yes, and um, and I was here's here's what got me. I was surprised at how many people responded in French. Now, like in French, like in actual French. Oh, and um, and many oui. of those handles had a little Canadian flag in the hand, mm. and so I was like, you know what? I'd never really paid attention before, but we have a lot of Canadian Twitter followers. So hey, shout out to you guys. Bonjour. Thanks, thanks for contributing to the uh, one thousand follower uh, crest that we have just overcome. And Merci. so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a we oui. oui. uh, merci yeah didn't you just go to france like a year i did ago i went something? to i went to france but i don't know if you're supposed to compare like france to canada no they're right they're it's different like, i know that that's like you know latin america speak. to spain I, you know i don't right. know if it's the same yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know no. if it's okay it's okay but i don't know no i totally get what you mean i only meant that because they speak french in parts of canada and they speak French in all of France. So yeah, uh, no, I know. <clears throat> I do not. I've been to France twice and still have oh. the same. <laughs> yes, we oh, we oui, oui, oui. uh, I've been to the Moulin Rouge, and that's how you say it Whoa. in France. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, but thank you to our Canadian followers. I think that's really awesome. Uh, we look at our stats sometimes, and I'm always surprised by. What countries, I always, my first thought, and no offense, and not to the, our Canadian brothers and sisters, my, my first thought is that's a bot, uh, especially when it's, you know, like, I don't know, some crazy country that doesn't speak our language. But uh, 
my second thought is, wow, that's really cool that that somebody from Germany is listening to us or a few people. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, uh, I, can I just say uh, to our Canadian brothers and sisters, um, take off you hosers and uh, enjoy your toques. Is that <laughs> offensive? I don't know. All right. We right love you. There, uh, yeah. Hose. Yeah, hose. So as I spent um, most of my time looking for beer. Uh, Strange Brew, my favorite movie of all time, by the way. You drank the last Other beer, than Star right? Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got two things left to talk about. Okay, Josh, let's get to them. Um, you haven't mentioned my new Funko baseball hat, so I'm going to mention that right now. That's it's beautiful. got It's got one of those bill up, like in the upright position. You look good. That, you look good. That's, no, that's I okay. dig it. I dig it. Okay. Skater boy. Right, I, I, I skater boy. Sh- you can wear it all <laughs> yeah. day. 43-year-old skater boy. Yeah, that's break that hip. Uh, midlife crisis boy is what it is. <laughs> um all right, two things and I, Josh, I'm going to change the order on them for Ooh. you. I'm going to you know, last podcast we talked about, you know, I wonder you know, around Christmas time, who's going to sell more merch? Is it going to be Ahsoka or is it going to be Ray? Right. And I don't think that's a fair question right now because we're getting a lot of Ahsoka right now and like 2019 was a lot of Ray. And so but just out of curiosity, I put up a poll. Who's more popular, Ray or Ahsoka? That's a pretty unbiased question, you know, leaving the opinion of the reader to answer. Gender honestly. biased, but unbiased as far as, you know, uh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. It's that's fine though. I want to know. And and so uh it was overwhelming Ahsoka, like 70% to 30% over Ray. And I wasn't necessarily surprised that ahsoka was or had won there's over 100 people that voted um i wasn't surprised that ahsoka had won but what i was surprised as uh was at the margin of victory right that and i know it's it's a little biased in the timing of the and you know this is the statistician in me that's like well you're an, you're asking the question right now when we're heavy ahsoka right. and the clone wars and and she is a major focal point in Star Wars at this moment, where just maybe five, six months ago, it was heavy Ray. So if we would ask this five months ago, uh, would we have gotten the same results? Even even if Ahsoka still would have won, would it have been closer? I say yes. You know, no. You you still nope. think she would? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. And this Tell is coming why. from, uh, I get to be like that new person that's watching Star Wars for the first time as I go through Clone Wars. Here's why I think that. Um, Ahsoka has far more screen time, for one. Far more, right? Yeah. We're talking about yeah. uh, lots of screen time, even even though there's episodes without her in it. We also watch her go we, we grow. And I haven't even finished that trajectory yet, except for some of my you know, uh, dipping into the rebel side, which again, I have to finish that too, but, uh, (laughs) shut up. I know I I'm going to get my card pulled. Just shut up. I'm trying not to bring it up. Um, so Ahsoka though, you've watched her grow from snips all the way and then she's going to become fulcrum. I mean, you know, you just, it's just inherent. You know, so much more about Ahsoka than you do about Ray and that's okay. Whereas Ray, uh, develops the still force. has a lot of questions. Oh, a hundred, a hundred questions and more. Developed the force over the course of an hour. You watched Ahsoka become a Jedi from from Padawan, which is you can't you can't compete with that. You can't compete with twenty episodes a season, barring season seven, and and all of the information that's built up now. That being said, I can see where I, I would probably give a ten percent margin of 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 you know over to Ray right now because if you went before the movies were released, you we had all these questions and we anticipated that that movie could perhaps answer those questions. So your intrigue in those answers right. could have leaned you towards Ray. Yeah, but and, after the fact, and, it's not even a question. It's a so yeah, and right and right now as far as we know, Ray's story is ended. So the right. interest level in Ray is going to be less right now than it was five months ago. Well, and I think right now, you know, Ray and you love Ahsoka. That's, that's just what it is. And that's the only, and that's just like any relationship. The more time you get with right. each other, the, the deeper the connection. And at yeah. this point, 
That, and and I would say that you could say, I mean, this would be sacrilege, but you could say Ahsoka or Leia. Now that's terrible. We I know mm. Leia is going to win, but you know what I'm saying, like. But truly, well, Ahsoka... No, because it, that's a generational thing. You're going to get a certain age group of right. people that are going to be like Leia all day long, and it's not even close. Which would be and me. Then, and then you're going to get the younger fans, the newer to Star Wars people, um, that are going to be the exact opposite right. because they grew up on the on the animated series. Or how about Padme and, or Ahsoka? Mm, yeah. Padme doesn't carry the same weight as uh, Leia as far as just being a, a cornerstone foundational, you know, fixture in this in this uh, saga. But but Padme, Padme, especially now, as generationally speaking, like you, Padme has a lot more clout. Plus, she shows up in the Clone Wars a ton. So, yeah. And she's she's had a book or two about yep. her, just like Ahsoka has and. Um, so what would you, you know, say? That's a good one. Padme or Ahsoka? Mm. You know, I think you could ask that question to all three, and the results may not be surprising, but again, it might be the margins. Do we want to spoil I, that or do you want to pull that? Because I don't do you I, want to give your answer or do you want to pull it? Because I think it might be fun I, to put as a poll. Say, yeah, hey, I, based I, I on the Ray Ahsoka comparison, let's go start going backwards. Padme and Ahsoka. Who okay. are in the same on the same screen together. Unlike yeah. Padme and Leia, obviously, except for like, you know, three minutes there before she died. Yeah. Oopa. <laughs> Oopa. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, that's, that's a new impression I've been working on. <laughs> Medical droid. So anyway. Birth, birth, birthing <laughs> droid. <laughs> Deep cut Andy impressions. Uh, I'm a specialist in the medical birthing droids. There you go. He's going to look him up on Mark. Fiverr. Look him up on Fiverr. Yeah, yeah but say it. Say it. Go ahead. L move over Mark Thompson. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. uh, oh, golly. Um, all right. Last thing, Josh. And this, again, shout out to a new follower on uh, of ours on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, when I saw this, my my heart skipped a beat <gasps> because it said Christopher Lee <gasps> has just subscribed to your podcast, and I was like, oh, <gasps> Saruman, Saruman, Dooku, and then it's not that Christopher Lee because, right. as we all know, it's he's no longer with Lee. us. Yes, it is a Christopher Lee. And uh, he comes from us on Twitter at Mr. Chris Lee 24. He asked a great question to us today. And I told him, I said, you know what? That's a great question. I'm going to answer it on our podcast tonight. Hmm. And here's the question, Josh. Okay. How has COVID-19 affected the way you collect or has it? Josh, I'll let you answer this first. Okay. So um, it hasn't affected me because I'm a, uh, and I've already explained this about me. I'm a, a full throttle, put it in the garage collector, meaning at, at some point I'll come out and I'll go and get everything and then I'll stop and I'll worry about displaying it. So it hasn't affected me in that regard with the exception of today when contemplating the, my responsibility as a, a, a citizen, a quarantine citizen, and going to Target for the sole purpose, and I don't care if I grabbed a jug of milk or not, for the sole purpose of, of getting those pops. I went early on purpose because, you know, at, at 8 a.m., and you were there an hour before me, at 8 a.m., I knew that there wasn't going to be that many people there. And you know what? To be honest... There's people working at Target that are on the front lines retail-wise. You know, we talk a lot about the, the healthcare workers. There's a lot of retail workers and food preparers that are, are truly on the front line when it comes to, uh, you know, being exposed uh, that need a job. So, hey, I'll go buy some stuff from Target. Um, plus, I want it today. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so, yes, in the sense that it made me pause, and, and however, I do do a lot of online shopping, but man, there is nothing better than, than that tactile 
grabbing it off the shelf, finding it or not. Actually, it might even be as good to not find what you're looking for because anticipation or, or, or desire goes up and that increases your, uh, your your searching kick i mean you could probably articulate that better than me but you know when we're like we can't find what we're looking for you check that store and i'll check this store that's fun so yeah covid yeah. may stop me from driving an extra hour to go to another store because that's just foolish i don't want to you know i'll stay within my community but also just need to go home and and keep my six to eight to 12 to 20 feet away from people and, and just be done but they do have self-checkout so i was cool with that yeah so it has impacted how I've collected in the last three weeks or so. Um, I've done, I've done one offer up deal face to face, and uh, you know I was like, "Hey man, forgive me." And normally I shake hands, but I'm not gonna this time. And he's like, "Yeah, cool, that's fine." And uh, and so I, you know, that doing one offer up deal every three weeks is not unusual for me. Um, yeah, but it, it just, the interaction changed a bit. We still met, you know, in a parking lot at a store and, you know, kind of your typical offer up meetups. Um, but drug deals yeah. Yeah, slash. Yep. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, it's my online purchases that have been affected. Okay. Um, uh, I have purchased two things from Europe uh, over eBay one from UK, one from Germany. And those items have not been able to be shipped because of the heightened level of, of quarantine in those places. They're not able to get to the post office right. uh, to mail off a... Now, if it, if, it was, if it could fit in an envelope, they could just put it in their uh, mailbox or something. But, but as far as like a package goes you know, you gotta, uh, like for me, I'd have to take that to the post office to mail it off. Cause right. I don't have stamps.com and I can create my own, uh, postage or anything like that. So, um, so I've got two things that I've purchased that I have no idea when they're going to get to me. And, you know, I've communicated clearly with them. They've communicated clearly with me, but, uh, yeah, as of right now, it's unknown when, when they're arriving and it could be months right. before they, a they actually get here. So that's new, you know, both, is. both of the gentlemen that sold me the item said, Hey, understand I'm not able to get to the post office right now because of, you know, because of, uh, regulating their social distancing. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I can either refund you the money or, I'll just hang on to it and mail it to you when, whenever, whenever the ban gets lifted. And so it took a little, like, it took me a second, like, well, do I, I mean, these are strangers that I'm giving them money right. and hoping that they honor that at some point, even right. if it's months down the road, you know, do I want to do that? Or do I just want to get my money back and maybe try again somewhere less? So know, again, like you said, you've been affected by it. Like, cause normally... You know, I've absolutely been affected by it. So, so for right now, I've, I've said, just, you know, hang on to the money. I, I purchased it with the intent on getting it, even if it's not, you know, next week. <laughs> and, uh, and if anything changes, just let me know. Sure. So, so well, I'm trusting them a little bit and, but that's probably more in my nature to be a little, to trust first. Especially with collectors. Then, yeah. 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 So um, Most of those people you're meeting online are like people. So yeah, they want to make sure that they have a good experience when they buy something and, and also give a good experience. If you're getting communication, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Yeah. You know, if they're talking but, to you. Do you want to know what the two items are? I do. Duh. Um, one is a, a Clone Wars soundtrack album. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on vinyl? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you've been talking about that, so I like that you're following through. Andy makes lists, and he's checking this one off. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> and then the other one is a uh, it's a it's a it's a box. I bought a box. Cool. <laughs> that'll be shipped in a box. <laughs> ironically, um, it's a it's a Palatoy Slave One box. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's very yeah. cool. So it looks just like. 
the Kenner right. USA Palatoy or not Palatoy, the Kenner Slave One box. It just has a little tag at the bottom that says Palatoy on it. And for those that don't know, that just means it was uh, made in uh, the UK. Right. It's it's a European brand. And so um, they're rare in the United States. Actually, they're pretty rare in the UK too. Yeah. Um, uh, the guys uh, that I talked to on the uh, Darth Mark, uh, he told me that the Palatoy items are very expensive in the UK too. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not specific to the United States. Well, the build wasn't as as large, I'm sure. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those that are into GI Joes, it's similar like Action Force versus GI Joes. Like there, a lot of them are, are pretty much the same. Maybe a couple of design differences or color differences, uh, but it's the same kind of idea. Gotcha. That's well, that's very cool. So, I mean, that's a great question by uh, uh, Count Dooku. Uh, yeah. to, uh, I'm glad he asked. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> very elegant. Uh, keep it a up, very Chris. elegant thanks. question. Yeah, Good thanks repost. For, uh, thanks for following us, Chris. Shout out. And... Uh, being one of our newest followers. Actually, I think he was follower 1008. Nice. If I if I got my numbering correct here. So new follower starts off on the right foot by asking us a great question. Hopefully that answered it sufficiently for you. I think it did. All right. Well, I think that about does it for us. I do believe, Andy. Yes, Josh. And it looks like it's about bedtime at your place. <laughs> How could you guess? <laughs> we've got a we've got a Jawa in the room. Um, yeah, in a camouflage shirt, no less. No, no less. That's what I was saying. Uh, I I do believe we have a mile. We can't say a lot, but we do. We we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Yes, we uh, fans of the program. The closer we get to May, keep looking for some big news that we're going to drop. Very exciting stuff. Um, also keep on your horizon. We are going to be, I think next week's featured, uh, group of podcasters on Alan Voivod's star Wars seven by seven pop episode, which is podcasters on podcasting where he does, he goes outside of his normal seven minute podcast and goes like 20 to 30 minutes, uh, interviewing. He does one a week. Um, this this week he did Force Toast, the two gals from Force Toast. I like that. Uh, last yeah, I do too. I last think week, funny. Um, <laughs> last week he did Mark Thompson, who was uh, a lot of fun. Um, That's awesome. It, yeah, yeah and, and he's done uh, Coffee with Kenobi. They're they're very good podcasts. We're big fans of Alan's. As Alan, you know, yeah, seven by seven, Star Wars seven by seven. Uh, we can't stress it enough. Uh, obviously go listen to us, but listen to him. He's your seven minutes a day, seven days a week, dose of star Wars. And to be honest, uh, an inspiration for us and for a lot of other pods out there, uh, you should aspire to be as pro as Alan is, but yeah, yeah look for some, dude. look for some good stuff, uh, coming out of, uh, the Hollow Chronicles tweeter page and we will, uh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for May. Yeah. And you know what, Josh, we went uh, a minute 20, we're at a minute 23 right now, and that's a little longer than we normally do. Yeah. But it feels like we've been pretty full of content. Like there hasn't, yeah. we haven't been dragging, we've been pushing. Yeah, we're pushing you guys, we're pushing you. Um, and and that leads us uh, to our next kind of, my next kind of thing is, we're probably going to be asking you uh, with some polls, like the poll that Andy put up and some more, uh, uh, some some ideas as we progress the show Uh, We're always looking to get better. And, you know, just like you, we love Star Wars and we want to make sure that we're providing content that people want to listen to. And so we're going to ask you a couple questions, maybe say, hey, what do you like and what do you want to see? And Andy and I will uh, for sure go after it for you. But we love you. Thank you so much. 10, 10, 10, 10 is a great amount of followers. 10, 10 and 2020. I appreciate that. And let us know if you liked our new bit tonight. Leave it in the box. (laughs) Leave it in the box. We'll see you guys later. Follow us at Hall of Chronicles on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and you can find us on all the major podcast networks. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. See you later. Later, later.